Understanding how to get a packet from the outside world all the way down to a pod is as easy as one, two, three, four. So you would need to understand load balancer and the configuring of it, which Kubernetes doesn't supply load balancers, but it will configure it for you, or at least it'll supply an API that we can take a public IP address. And our goal is ultimately to route that traffic, and I might as well show you the path, since I don't have enough time to describe it in the detail I would like, um, all the way down through to the pods. So either any of these pods would actually work. Well, the load balancer only understands step two, which is going to be an IP address of the node itself. Interestingly, on each one of these nodes is going to be a port that's assigned, and it's going to be the same port. It's crazy. So I'm just going to write port 31,000 as an example. Watch this. I'm going to write port 31,000 again, and I'm going to write port 31,000 again. And if I had 70 more worker nodes, then that port 31,000 would be assigned to all of them, hogging that port up in the entire data center. All nodes now have that port. Hmm. The next step, I want you to notice that the cluster IP addresses here, this subnet is running inside here. That's not a typo. It's the same subnet everywhere. As part of the configuration that you don't have to do, but Kubernetes will handle for you, that node port, which I've just described right here, is mapped to a specific IP address in the cluster IP address range. That's step three. And of course, that would be done on all of these nodes. Lastly, and here's the individualization part, the IP address, the cluster IP address, which is selected out of this range, is forwarded in this particular case to 192.168.1.12, which maybe leads to this pod. And 192.168.2 dot, notice it's a different subnet here, leads uh, 26 to um, pod B, let's say, the second replica. And 88, look here, um, 192.168.3.88 to the last pod. So the load balancer really only needs to know the IP address and the port of wherever a pod is running. The node ports are always forwarded to a specific IP address in the cluster IP address range. And then the cluster IP is mapped to a specific IP address of each pod. For the record, that you absolutely could set the load balancer to go directly to the pod's IP address. You definitely could do that. You won't do that, but you could. The reason that that's not a good idea is because there's no guarantee that this pod's going to keep that IP address. And if the pod's deleted and created again, which Kubernetes will happily do, because it feels that it's right to do that, um, then it's gone, which means, okay, there's probably enough time to get the load balancer reconfigured. But if this comes back with a new IP address, there's not enough time to populate the DNS tables, and we just can't, leave, we can't react to that. The solution, therefore, is to use a cluster IP address, which is going to be the same for all instances. So you could change the node, you could change these pod IP addresses around all day long. It won't change the cluster IP address and the cluster IP address existing only inside of this environment is going to guarantee the traffic. Uh, another node here speaking to that particular IP address always gets to the correct pod.